Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Paula here. <laughs> Bowersville Farm. Um, so, I have some chores to do this morning. I've got to get outside and do. They say we're going to have a freeze. Yeah. The end of April here in South Carolina. Imagine that. We're going to have a freeze. So, I've got to go outside and possibly cover our get beds covered for today. Among other things. I've got to do that. i got to feed chickens. I got, got things to do. So I thought I would take y'all along for the ride if you want to come and wait till you see our raised beds. Honey, we got a salad bowl raised bed like you wouldn't believe. It's so full of lettuce and greens. We couldn't possibly eat this, this much lettuce. So yeah, I guess I'll be sharing some with my chickens. Unless any of my neighbors would like to come over and have some, we're open <laughs> for business. You can come pick yourself some lettuce. Um, I don't mean open for business, but please come help yourself to our salad bowl. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get our shoes on. Oh dear. Okay, I see one shoe. You know, I can't even remember where my shoes are. Oh, here's the other one. Okay, good. Got two shoes. Hey girls, y'all ready to go outside? We got work to do, don't we? Okay. All right, everybody out. Let's go, let's go. They beat me. <laughs> now, a few weeks ago, I ordered this. It is the row covers that we're gonna need. I, I all bought them not thinking we would actually need them. <laughs> I thought, well, I'll have these to cover my lettuces later this summer when, because you know, the heat burns up your lettuce. It doesn't like the sun of South Carolina. Um, but no, we need it now. I'm pulling this mess out. Let's see, what is it? It's row cover fabric. And this are like the I gotta unpack it, but it's the, um, it's actually the row cover, like, hoops. Dear Lord, I hope those are gonna fit my garden. Probably not. <laughs> yes, okay. I'm gonna figure this out. That's what I got to do today, among other things. Okay, so let's go out and feed our chickens first. Yeah, let's go feed the chickens first. Because I bet you they don't have water, and I bet you they out of food. They're always hungry, and they'll probably run out at me. Even though that's an electric fence, they're so hungry they run out of the electric fence to meet me. Oh well, here we go. So what I'm going to do first is fill up our water buckets to take out there because I didn't fill them up last night. So I'm going to fill them out, and that's what I'm going to take out to the chickens this morning. Okay, so I've got our water full. Now I gotta go find the rotting more. Where did he leave that thing? <laughs> well, I'm gonna go get the yard tractor and then we're gonna haul out there and go give the water and the food to the chicks. There's my sexy machine. Mm -hmm. I know you're jealous. Martha Stewart's jealous, I know that. There's my handsome beautiful dump truck. I love that thing. And our, yeah, the yard tractor. Here we go. <coughs> Seat's wet, y'all. Oh, well. Let's see if I can. Well, that's just part of the job, having a wet butt all day. What's up, Mr. T? <laughs> Mr. T? Gobbly, gobbly, gobbly. I love that bird. Here we go.
Okay, so here to pick up the water, I'm going to put it in the back here in my buggy that's attached to the lawnmower. You're jealous, I know. I get to drive this lawnmower all day, doing my chores. It's fabulous. Yesterday I moved the meat birds. We move them like every other day. We have to because they eat all the grass. Um, if you look behind me, you can see, you know, basically the grass line where we've been moving this this fence. We've moved it from from back there all the way to here, and you can see there's tall grass and not tall grass, <laughs> but um. I brought a baby pool out here yesterday or a couple days ago and I have to fill it every day. I couldn't find one of those baby pools with the hard sides and I brought it for the geese basically because Amelia and Abigail, they, they just, they really want to be in the water. I think they want to be in the pond and they're a little mad at me. But yesterday they tried to escape through the net and they got stuck. They, their head was stuck in and then their feet, it was a mess when I was moving everybody but when I put the I, I usually fill up the uh, wagon back here full of water and it has a dump truck feature and I back it up to the baby pool and I dump it and I fill up the, the baby pool for the ducks and uh, Abby and uh, Amelia and what happens is the chickens like to sit on the side of the pool and they let the water out yeah that happens. So when I come out, it looks... <laughs> okay, so they're hungry. I'm going to get out here and we're going to feed everybody. Looks like they have water, thank goodness. Maybe I'll just pour these over here. Okay, let's go feed everybody. I'm going to turn this off so I don't electrocute myself. Unhook my Premier One fence so I can get in. All right, watch out, everybody! I'm stepping in. Beep beep. Dang, y'all turned over the whole feeder. All right, that must have been hungry. I hope there's feed out here. Rob usually leaves me a full one. Yes, yes. Well, maybe I should move there. Okay. Here, girls. Y'all 
birds do grow at a fantastic rate because of their breed um, and we got these guys because we thought they would they grow a little slower than the uh, Cornish crosses this is the rainbow uh, ranger red rangers I believe they're called so I mean, we're going on I think we're on week I don't know, week six or week seven for them. And then these are Peking ducks. They're not fully feathered out. So we still have, we were thinking we were going to go to freezer camp for the birds the first weekend in May, which is next weekend, I believe. But um, I think it's probably going to be another two weeks because they don't seem big enough to me to butcher quite yet so but we're going through like two bags of feed probably every other every four days so they're really eating a bag of feed is what 50 pounds so they eat a lot we feed a five gallon bucket in the morning and a five gallon bucket in the evening and that's almost a full bag every other day so hello so I'm gonna feed them their water now yes I'm leaning over I put the camera on the hood of the tractor but okay I think I'm gonna go and fill up the uh, wagon the pool most of that water in my shoes <laughs> all right we're gonna go fill up the wagon so we can make a dump of water for the pool I put a little bit of feed on top of the their um, shelter in hopes that Amelia and Abigail would access it but They've lost out. <laughs> it looks like everybody else got it. I actually get quite often asked, you know, how can you um, raise such cute little things like these ducks and the cute, cute, little, sweet little baby birds knowingly, you know, that you're going to actually butcher them later because dog, these ducks are adorable the little quack quack and waddling and but the truth of the matter is what I do understand is that we are raising we're raising our own food and we ourselves know what we're feeding them is healthy they're out here eating the grass and bugs which I don't really care to eat bugs myself, but you know, they're out here eating healthy things and we're raising our animals uh, in the healthiest way possible. And this is what we're gonna be feeding ourselves. And I'm, I'm, when I watch 
these animals as they grow, I have to keep that in mind because this is what we're going to be feeding our family and selling to other families. And it's really important for, for me to, to know that what we're doing is raising very healthy animals that will nourish our bodies in the future. So, um, if that answers your questions, I mean, I, that is something I hear quite often. How can you butcher something that's so cute, it's so precious? And I do love them and it is very difficult, but I do so appreciate the fact that we have taken such good care of them and I'm really proud of that. So. Hey, sweet pea. How you doing, Miss Bonnie? All right, really quickly, I'm going to go out and get uh, Penny's bucket because we also have to soak her food for about an hour. Sometimes it doesn't take quite an hour, but she gets a special meal each morning and in the evening and she's waiting on it she knows the schedule I've got to go get her some fly spray today hey sweet pea yes you're telling me you're ready for your breakfast um, she's been getting a lot of ticks on her belly and I've got to figure out uh, a remedy for keeping ticks off of her if anyone out there knows of something that I can Put on her belly that's natural so that would repel ticks the deer ticks out here are really bad so if you would leave that in the comment section i'd really appreciate it okay so i need to get beet pulp and alfalfa so i'm out here putting uh, penny's food excuse me for my hands Trying to get her stuff ready for the day. Gotta fill her bucket. Let's see. I need one of these. This shredded beet pulp is so hard to put it in the I do a full scoop of beet pulp and a full scoop of alfalfa. I'll then add some um, olive oil to this, but I think we're actually out of olive oil. I gotta go to the store. <laughs> so, let me go add some water to this. So it's quite breezy today and they say the temperature is really going to drop for the next two days that we're supposed to get freezing temperatures tonight and tomorrow. So I am going to 
prepare myself for that. Um, check out that salad garden. Look at that. Isn't that crazy amazing? I need to pick some of it. Um, I did pick this row of lettuce yesterday, but look at my romaine. It is gone crazy. I think I've eaten salad for lunch. But I want to protect it. I want to, I want to protect it. Okay, so I have row cover. I've never done this before. I live in South Carolina. I have never had to use row cover. Um, I actually bought it so that I could grow lettuce all summer long and I was just going to grow it in a row cover tent to kind of keep the sunshine off of it. But I'm actually having to use it to protect it from frost, which is if I grow this, if I grow this crop in the fall, this is what I'd be using this for then. And I bought these guys and I do believe they're going to be a little small. So, I mean, these hoops are like, for like an individual, just one row. Now, maybe I can put two together somehow. I don't know. I've never done this. Oh, aggravating. Maybe I can somehow do like this. So I can cover the whole thing. I think this would work if I could figure it out. Okay. I was supposed to get some kind of clips. Did I get those clips? I was supposed to get clips that held the fabric to these hoopy things. Oh, good lord. There goes my brain at work again. Okay. I don't remember squat. Are we in this bag? The directions say. Protect plants from cold, wind, block insects and prevent spread of disease. Keep soil and plants from overheating and reduces transplant shock. Okay. It does not show any directions, of course. If it did, they would be in Chinese. So, <laughs> I've got fabric. Okay. I wonder if I have twisty ties or something. I don't know. Oh, I did get them. That's not enough. Sweet Lord. Okay, well, let's see what we can do here. All right. Oh, Lordy. Okay, this is really big. How? How in the special hail do you fix this? Oh my gosh, this is so big. Okay. Okay. Let's just go that way with it. Oh dear Lord. Okay, yeah, this is big. I think I will start by cutting it in half. Is it this way? Oh no, I'm not going to cut it in half because it's just that damn long. Okay. I'm going to measure this thing with my arms. How's that? So, I'm like, two full arm lengths, it looks like. Two full arm lengths, so. One. Y'all like the way I measure? And two. Oh. What do I do with the scissors? There they are. Okay, so I need to cut along this line right here. Y'all wouldn't believe how long this is. <laughs> this is crazy. Let's see what the 
think I'm doing. Well, it looks like I have enough for three beds. And I actually have one, two, three, four beds planted, so, hmm. I'm gonna have to like cut up a trash bag or something later for one. He won't be so professional looking. So, what I'm gonna do with these guys is, I'm gonna make an arch of some kind. Stick it in like so. This. I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Point this down. So, I'm not going to have enough hoops. <laughs> Let me move my garlic out of the way so I can get to this. So these guys are going to be up here, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if I could twist them together somehow. Not really, but they're just magic. Sit there. <laughs> I think I could do three of these guys. Uh, one. I think I'll be okay. This guy and put it behind the fence where the peas are so it has some support. Like that. This is making better snaps. Well, it is to me. I don't know about y'all, but it is to me. There. Okay, here comes the real test. Can you see me? Hello, hi. I'm gonna put the white cloth on. Well, she works. Oh, <laughs> okay, so what I think I'm gonna do is hold this together like so.
thank God I found that wire and the wire clippers because, you know, sometimes it just takes a little ingenuity to get some of these things done around here. I just love the sounds of the birds while I'm working out in the yard. It's just so peaceful. I hope y'all are enjoying the sounds of the birds as well. Well, this is coming together. Um, it's taken me some time to figure this out, but it's coming together. Now, only if the wind would stop blowing. That would help out tremendously. Yay, it's beginning to look like a tunnel. I'm actually clipping down this white fabric all the way around so it's taking me a minute and I don't have another person to film me so sorry for the boring long stretches here. Okay, so I've managed to get the first bed done. <laughs> I'm gonna show you. So, it doesn't look too bad. And instead of using the hoop clips that I purchased for the hoops, I just used my clothespins from the clothesline. They work better. And these hoop clips are holding it to the bed itself, the raised bed. So, um, Unfortunately, I don't have enough of those hoop clips for the rest of the beds. I just had enough for one. But we're going to figure it out and make do. So, I'm going to go ahead and cover the rest of the beds. But I, I'm going to show you really quickly what I took. I took everything out of the greenhouse just so it could have sunshine all day. I've been taking it out during the day and putting it up at night. But um, I have got look at everything is sprouting up I have brandy wines my sage is coming up the lemon balm look at my lemon balm and okra more maters I got little sweetie maters and all my jalapenos and habaneros are coming up cantaloupes 
all my dill. This is my herbs. I'm so excited about my herbs. Um, we have basil and my moon and stars watermelon and zucchinis. And I've got more. You know what I'm upset about is my lemon cucumbers not doing the thing. Oh, I love lemon cucumbers and I only have one cucumber and no squash. That's just so weird. Usually, when I do seeds like this, the first things to come up are my cucumbers and my zucchinis, and then tomatoes take forever and a day. But for some reason, all my maters is coming up, and none of my melons. Well, I've got watermelon, and I've got cantaloupe, but no cucumbers and squash. Hmm. But I have lots of that time, time and maters. So, I got a lot of stuff to do. Of course, I bought some beautiful flowers. But, and look at y'all, look at my sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes and potatoes. This is my bed of kale. Last night we had kale and turnips turnip greens for supper. It was so good. But this has my cabbage and my collards and everything here. And my Brussels sprouts and my kohlrabi and spinach. Everything's coming up real good. All my um, carrots. So exciting. I've also got all my fruit trees. Everything is just hanging like my pears, I'm hanging in pears and peaches. I, I'm hoping that my fig tree is going to come back out because it did get hit by that frost a couple weeks ago. And I'm hoping this frost doesn't get to it again because I don't think my leaves, my leaves are just now coming. Um, the last freeze we had, I thought I'd get a little closer so you can see. But the first freeze we had, this is from the first freeze right here. But I'm finally, finally getting little leaf buds. And I'm hoping that this freeze doesn't freeze those. Because I don't know if this tree will come back this year. If, and I probably won't get any fruit off of it. I'm really disappointed because I love myself some fig preserves. But my um, trees are coming along and my blueberries are going crazy. And... You can see the little fruits appearing on my peach tree. And actually this free, this peach tree did get caught in the frost. So I don't know if we're going to have a lot of peaches on it. Um, this peach tree is showing more peaches than the big one. It has little peaches all over it. So we got little peaches everywhere and I don't have these on my big tree so maybe we'll at least have some peaches on this tree all right well that is it for today and I thank y'all for for joining me um and learning with me how to cover my crops from frost and um, We'll have more for you the next time we get together. Just loving life out here on the farm and, and learning together. And that is something I'll do every day. Is I'm always learning something new. And I'm happy to share it with you all. Um, of course, if you liked what we talked about in today's episode, please do hit that like button um, and let us know that you enjoyed the information that you got today and if you haven't already subscribe when you subscribe then it helps you to know when we have a new episode it will alert you that we have new episodes for you to see hitting the like button helps other people out there in YouTube land to see that we're here and that we may show up in their search when they're searching for homesteads and farming information and that sort of thing so 
I hope you will do that for us. It does help us a lot. And I really appreciate you guys joining us today. Sending out love and light to you all. Mwah! We'll see you on the next, the next episode, the next time. So see ya.